now from South Seminole Academy in Castleberry, Florida. Direct from the third floor of building number three, this is South Seminole News. Good afternoon, Hurricanes. Happy Tuesday. I'm Olivia. And I'm Caden. It's November 1st, 2022. Welcome to South Seminole News. On today's show, we'll tell you about the canned food drive, the Charlie Brown auditions, and a cross country 5K run. We hope you're having a great day today. Let's check in with Juliana for the Daily Report. Hello, Juliana. Hello, everyone. Today's weather is partly cloudy with a high of 89 degrees. A reminder, if you take any photos of yourself this school, this school year, sign up to the South Seminole News at yahoo.com so that we can put them on the news. Coming up later in the show, we'll tell you about the PTSA. Now let's take it to the South Seminole Lounge for the lunch report. Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the South Seminole Lounge. Today's lunch special is chicken, beef, or veggie burrito bowl with toppings. Tomorrow will be boneless wings, mashed potatoes, and gravy with a dinner roll. Visit redappledining.com for all breakfast and lunch options. You can find the everyday lunch favorites down on the bottom of the screen, as well as teacher birthdays and other upcoming events. Coming up later in the show, we'll tell you about the Cross Country 5K and the Charlie Brown School Play, so please stay tuned. If you or your classmate need to record some anything here in the South Seminole Lounge, please contact the newsroom. You can find our Friday afternoon show during a period at 3.10 p.m. on you, uh, our YouTube page. That's all from the South Seminole Lounge. We'll see you in the next time. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks. When we come back, we'll tell you about the PTSA and the canned food drive. As we go to the commercial... Here is a video of the 2022 Beta Club Halloween dance. We'll be right back after this.
Hello, South Seminole Academy. This is Coach Burt with Ball Class Flag Football. Just reaching out and touching base with you guys, let you know that our flag football program is coming back. Practices start November the 10th on, thir with, on Thursdays after school, and practices will be running for the rest of the month, and then we will have a tournament amongst all the schools uh, in Seminole County, and that will happen on December the 3rd. That's a Saturday. So if you're interested in flag football and coming out, Feel free to stop by PE you know, with the PE coaches and grab a flyer from them. And if you're interested in, you know, you have a flyer and you want to sign up online, we do have online access. So if you want to go online, you can register there as well, uh, www.ballclass.com. So if you're interested, feel free to sign on up. And if your parents have any questions, have them give me a call or email. All right. Thank you and see you guys. Hi everybody, it's Mr. Miles here. Thank you for watching South Seminole News. I have a quick commercial here to let everybody know about the Charlie Brown Christmas Special. That'll be coming up in December. Auditions for the Charlie Brown Christmas Special will be on Friday, November 4th, during Elevate and also during 8th period Storm Class. If you are interested in picking up a script for the play because you would like to audition on that Friday, please send me an email at the address up on the screen. That's milesaz at myscps.us. The reason why you need to email me is, is I can send you the script as a Google document. That email that I send back to you will also be your permission to go to the auditions. We don't want people just randomly showing up when we make the announcement during Elevate on November 4th. This will be your pass. When they make the announcement, show your teacher either on your phone that you've got the script or in an email on one of the computers to let them know that, yes, I'm going down to audition for the play. We hope that the auditions will go quickly, and if we have any overflow, we will be doing it also during eighth period storm class. Now, for those of you interested in viewing the play, it will be on Friday, December 9th at 8 p.m. in Leadership Hall. And again, on the next day, Saturday, December 10th at 5 p.m. And just so you know, we will have two casts of people in the event that someone is not able to make it to one of the casts. So you'll be auditioning. We will have two Charlie Browns, two Linuses, two Lucys, two Schroeders, two of every cast member. The only one you do not have to worry about is Snoopy. That is being handled by Miss Mango. Thank you very much, Miss Mango, for handling that. Snoopy will be selected. And once again... If you are interested in the auditions, you must send me the email. Now, if you want to see the past uh, uh, plays that we have done, you can go to our YouTube channel and look under Charlie Brown 2019. That was the last time we were able to do the play. So once again, please email me. I will send the script to you, and good luck to those that will be auditioning on Friday, November 4th. Thank you. Welcome back, Amen that the PTSA school store will be open Friday before school in the breezeway outside the lunchroom entrance. They will be selling various treats ranging in prices from one to three dollars cash only. Thank you for the PTSA for selling these items. Attention all students, please remember to check your school email for a message about signing up for next week Elevate classes. If you did receive an email, click on the link inside, fill out the form to choose the Elevate class that you need to attend. Thank you. Also this month, the front office and the families in need organize, organization would like our students to bring in non-perishable canned food item normally consumed during Thanksgiving dinner. Please make a box during the Leadership Academy to place the items. The pick crew can come by and pick up on Friday or items can be brought to the guidance office. They will be collecting times until November 6th. Thank you for your help. That's all for today. Make sure to check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at South Seminole and South Seminole News. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please like the South Seminole Academy and PTSA Facebook pages for more info. And now, at this time, we take you to Dr. Coleman, Mr. Fernandez, and Ms. Mafuz for a special message for our teachers and students. Hello, Hurricanes. This is Dr. Coleman. 
coming to you today for um, with different cause of concern that we've seen here at South Seminole Academy. I am here with two other administrators, Mr. Fernandez and Ms. Mafus. And each one of us are gonna be talking to you about some of the concerns that we're seeing and pretty much a vision or an expectation of what we are wanting to see over the next few weeks and further on. We are no longer, guys, I'm serious. We are no longer accepting this behavior. And you guys will be consequenced as needed. You will see some of your friends who have been here are no longer here. This, this, it has to come to an end, and this is where we are. So for the next few days in Elevate and CNN 10, we will be reviewing the Student Discipline Code of Conduct. You will be reflecting on the behaviors and completing a Code of Conduct poster with your peers with a new commitment to re-establish our leadership culture. Next slide. Okay. Our discipline data. Discipline data. This is like pretty, pretty ridiculous, but also kind of eye-opening. And I'm, I'm really talking to you guys, you know, because I want you to know that I care. This is coming from a place of caring, not talking down to you, or disrespecting you, but letting you know what we're seeing. And this is not how we storm at SSA. We have 995 students at SSA. This school year, we've had 289 referrals since the beginning of the year. And I know that sounds like a lot, but this is another fact that is even more alarming. 34 of the 995 students have received 166 of those referrals. Listen to that closely. 34 of the 995 students that we have on this campus are responsible for 166 referrals, which means they're getting multiple referrals, which translate to 57% of the referrals on our campus. Do you guys hear me? Are coming from 34 students, which means over 900 students are doing the right thing and I applaud those students who are doing the right thing. The major infractions that we're seeing at SSA, you know, I asked Mr. Fernandez, I'd like to just highlight the top five. So the top five that we are seeing is insubordination, which is the refusal or failure to follow a directive or order from a school staff member, a bus driver, or any other adult in authority at school. Insubordination, skipping class, not reporting to or leaving an assigned class, activity or area without receiving proper approval by following the established procedures for checking out of a class unsafe act, engaging in any act which compromises the health or safety of an individual, including but not limited to recklessness, pushing, shoving, hitting, or slapping. Disrespect, using words or acts that demean, degrade, antagonize, or humiliate a person or a group of persons. And then we have our old favorite fighting, aggression, confrontation. But with fighting, it's when two or more persons mutually participate in use of force or physical violence that requires either physical intervention 
or results in injury requiring first aid or medical attention. So again, insubordination, skipping class, unsafe act, disrespect, fighting. Those are not characters of students at SSA. So now it's time for us to just push pause. And I mean it, push pause and just stop and think about the decisions that you have been making personally across campus, either to support or alleviate the problem, or what part have you played in the problem? We hear about upstanders and bystanders, and Mr. Fernandez will talk a little bit about that. But if you're just standing by, that's part of the problem. So just push pause, guys. Reset. Reset. Stop and think. And now I'm going to say, you hear I'm very passionate, and I wanted you guys to know just how serious I am about what we are observing here on campus. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Fernandez. Well, students and hurricanes, I just want to go over some storm expectations. Uh, strive for success, take responsibility, opt to lead, respect others, make good choices. That's what STORM stands for. We, we've got hallway expectations. The expectations in our hallways are that when you're dismissed, there's plenty of time for you to get from one class to the next. Now, some of you that are tardy don't get to class on time because you're either standing in the hallway, going to the wrong floors, meeting your friends, deciding you want to go to the bathroom for an extended period of time during those. You need to be in class. If you're not in class, hero slips will be issued. And speaking about hero slips, those are time stamped. So if they're time stamped, you're not to get a hero ticket and walk around for 30 minutes before you get back to class. Because at that point, it's no longer a hero slip. Now that's insubordination. That's a disciplinary referral. Will be followed with a consequence. Go directly to class. We need you to get to where you need to be. There is plenty of time for you to get to your classes. No one should be in the back stairwell at any point in time ever. That back stairwell is where Mrs. Walsh's class is, where the robotics class is on the second floor, law on the first floor, robotics on the second. There is no class on the third floor in that back stairwell. We have three other stairwells that you can use to get where you need to be. Please plan accordingly. 10-10 freeze. You are not to be out of your class the first 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes of class. Do not ask to go to the bathroom. You will not be able to go to the bathroom in the first 10 minutes or the last 10 minutes of class. Teachers will be abiding by that. Please don't ask. It's not going to happen. Um, but the hero. People say, well, I couldn't find a hero person. Any floor you're on, a hero slip can be generated for you. If for whatever reason, you can't find a person to give you a hero ticket. You are not to go to the front office. Do not go to the front office. Let me try to say that one more time to be as clear as possible. Do not go to the front office. If no teacher should be sending you to the front office, you should not be going to the front office. If you cannot find anyone, you come down to the PSC. Ms. Bermudez can issue you one. My office is right next door to it. I can issue you one. You are not to go to the front office to get a hero ticket, period. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That's it. I'm trying to be as clear as I can with that. Um, and one last thing that, um, before we move on is, as Dr. Coleman said, be an upstander, not a bystander. And if there's a something going on, and guys, I've seen it. There's an issue going on. One student and two students are upset. They're confronting each other in, in, in the hallway. And some students on our campus, unfortunately, their first instinct is, let me take the phone out and video it. Let me, take, let me go stand on something and get a better angle at it. I'm just letting you know, guys, if something happens between those two students and law enforcement gets involved, they're going to review the security footage. And if they see anyone with those phones out videoing it, they may ask for those phones. And there's nothing I, Dr. Coleman, or anyone else can do about it because at that point, it's a law enforcement issue. Once you take those phones out, 
and you record it, even if you don't post it, you have made yourself part of that problem. Like it or not, you have put yourself into a bad position. Just keep that in mind next time you see something going in the hallway. Are you going to be an upstander or are you going to be a bystander and not take action to help your fellow students? And I do applaud our students who are doing that, right, Absolutely. Mr. Fernandez Absolutely. and Ms. Mafuz? Mm -hmm. We have some students that come and tell us things that are going on to try to prevent it. So keep, you know, keep up the good work with that. We just need more kids doing the right thing. All right, guys. I'm going to speak to you about lunch protocols and lunch procedures. First of all, once that bell rings for lunches, you are to report immediately to the cafeteria. Again, bell rings, go straight to the dining area, whether you're gonna eat outside in the cart or you're gonna eat inside. We have limited seating outside, so once the tables are full, it will be closed and you will remain in the cafeteria. Please do not come up to the adult that's standing at the door, which is usually me, or any other adult to say, can I go outside? No, once it's closed, it's closed. If you leave your stuff outside, you leave your stuff outside. There's no safe seatings. There's no, oh, I left my stuff. Mm -mm. Bring your stuff in, because if you get stuck inside, you will remain inside. And we have had some students that actually have had items stolen because they left them outside. Right. Do not do that. Do not leave your stuff outside. If you leave your personal property outside to save a spot, to enter the cafeteria, you are taking that risk. Yes. Um, another thing, once you're in there or you're in your location, whether it's outside or inside, please stay in your area and remain seated. You'll, we'll, we'll be starting dismissal by tables, and once we start that dismissal inside the dining area by tables, that is when you're going to stand up at the same time and throw your trash away. Do not stand up for any other reason unless you raise your hand and you need an adult to approach you. The dismissal will start by tables, not by the bell. By tables, we'll let you stand up, throw your trash away, go back and sit down, and we'll wait for the bell. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you guys are aware when you're inside the cafeteria, we try to dismiss at least a minute or two prior to give the staff inside the cafeteria to get the area ready for the next lunch. So please, again, wait for someone to come to your table and say, throw out your trash, and then you can go. And I think another thing, you, you touched on it a bit, and Mr. Fernandez is outside where I am outside and our other administrators. When you're in your, lo you need to remain seated, guys. You guys are running, you're in one area, then, oh, I see my friends over in a different area. So you're just walking back and forth, walking back and forth. You'll notice that some of the tables that are normally outside are no longer outside because we really have to limit how many students are outside to keep it safe for the students here at South Seminole, for the adults here at South Seminole. That is why these things are being in place. So the first questions you guys are going to say is, why? Why do we have HERO? Why do we have this? Why do we have to seat, seat and stay seated when we go to lunch? Why do we have to stay in? And the simple answer to all of that is to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And so that you are being able to be monitored by enough staff. So if you want to be mad at your leadership team for trying to keep you safe, I think we're okay with mm -hmm. that we're because with that. we're fine with that because we care enough about you to keep you safe. And so with that, we're almost at the end of CNN 10. We're going to, like I said, on Wednesday, we're going to review the student discipline code of conduct page by page by your wonderful leadership team. Because we wanna make sure you guys are aware of what's even in the student code of conduct, okay? So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Fernandez for some last minute words of wisdom. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. And, and I, before I get to that, the one thing struck me as you were talking, uh, giving out hero tickets, and, and I don't know how many times I've heard, but I was at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say, were you in, in the, the class? Yeah, in the and, class. But I was at the door, but were you in the class? Mm -hmm. 
don't put yourself in that situation. Don't put yourself in a situation where, you know, you, you get a hero ticket for a tardy over something silly. Guys, tardies, skipping class. These are things that you are in complete control of. Yes. No one else controls that. You do. Mm -hmm. Getting somewhere on time, making sure you're where supposed to be. Two of the easiest, simplest things you can control. They're within your control. No one else controls that. Other kids don't control that. Teachers don't control that. Your parents don't control that. You control that. Those are silly things to get hero tickets for. And I'll leave you with this. Every decision you make today can and will affect you in the future. As small of a, of a decision you think it is now, it can, be a, it can affect you really negatively in the future. And it can also affect you positively, depending on the decision you make. If you decide that two people are, 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 are getting into it and you want to jump in there, you have now become part of the problem. Two people are getting into it and you decide to be a peacemaker and, and take care of that, that will help us. And it will positively affect you. Just remember, every decision you make can affect you one way or another, positive or negative. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. So I want to tell you guys to... Make it a great day, not to have a great day, but make it a great day. And remember, as Mr. Fernandez said, the choice is yours, whether or not you have a great day. So make it a great day. And as always, don't forget, don't forget to, to storm. storm.